Welcome back to another video on how to use ChatGPT to make apps. We'll be using mostly ChatGPT4, including some of the new features like image generation, as well as image upload and analysis. In my other videos, I showed you how to chat with OpenAI's ChatGPT chatbot, either 3.5 or 4, to make Android apps and games. The way it works is it will tell you what to do, how to do it, and will even provide you all of the code that you'll need to make apps. I had earlier made a web app that was a simple typewriter simulator, and I got the code to make that typewriter simulator into an Android app. In my last video, I made the beginning of a hidden object game in Android Studio for Android mobile devices. This video will be about making a simple user interface that allows you to do something. In this case, change the image on the screen with arrows. A non-game app for a little change. I'm also changing things up by going back to Java, a language many of you as well as I are more familiar with, than Kotlin. Kotlin is the official language for making Android apps. Android Studio will actually make the app in Kotlin by default, so you have to change a couple things if you want to use Java. In the end, I show you how I asked ChatGPT how to use Git Bash to commit the app to GitHub. As I said, I'll be using ChatGPT to make this app. You can either follow along, use the code from this video, or use ChatGPT yourself. I have a plus account, which means that I can chat with ChatGPT4 up to a limit of about 50 messages per three hours. Let me tell you, if you're making an app or software from scratch using ChatGPT, you will run into this limit, and often. Thankfully, with the Plus account, it will simply kick you back down to the 3.5 model. One pro for that model is it's usually lightning fast, while 4 is actually often very slow. The problem with using only 3.5 with the free plan is that if you reach the limit, the message limit, it will shut you off until three hours later. With the plus plan, you can at least continue with 3.5. Objectively, I think GPT-4 provides a little better code and can actually understand your messages better. With 3.5, sometimes they go around in circles. You tell it an issue, it provides some code which causes either the same or a different issue, and then you tell it that again, the chatbot will apologize but will provide bad code again. This happens to me more often with 3.5 than with 4, but your mileage may vary. But the 3.5 model, for the most part, usually provides sufficient code and sufficient explanations, at least for the simple things that I'm using it for. If you're following along or doing something similar, try the 3.5 version and see where it takes you. Just remember to save your code, comment out sections it tells you to replace rather than delete, in case the new code makes things buggy or breaks something. You can comment out a whole section of code in Android Studio, the same as with Visual Studio Code, by highlighting the code and pressing control forward slash. Uncomment out the whole section the same way. Remember, these chatbots are very far from being perfect. You are the one in charge of creating and modifying your app. You're just using ChatGPT like a tool in a similar way of Googling something or using YouTube to find out how to do something or to find actual code that you can copy and use. Try everything yourself first and test early and often. So let's get started using ChatGPT to make an app. For this particular app, you'll need some resources in the drawable folder. After making a new project and selecting New Project with an Empty View, Android Studio will generate the directories and a bare minimum of files. You can add your images to the drawable folder. I'm using some paintings by the Italian painter Caravaggio, the images of which are in the public domain, meaning they're copyright free. I put 10 of these paintings in the drawable folder, which I can access by right-clicking and selecting Open in Explorer, and then I just drop the paintings in. 10 is just an arbitrary number here. You can use as many paintings as you like, and you can use any images you like. You also need a left arrow and a right arrow to use as image buttons. I made some of these really quick in Photoshop. At first they were green, but that was distracting and taking attention away from the painting, so I eventually made them gray. If you're using ChatGPT+, one great feature is that it can use Dolly to generate images and it can do so by chatting with the bot about what you want and what you don't want. I asked it to give me a sheet of user interface buttons and it provided these. I also asked it for a generic painting on a wall and it provided this nice image, which I could have used if not using real paintings. In a future version, I may even use the image with the frame on it for each of the paintings, which you can then scroll through. I also use another AI image generation site like Leonardo AI, which also generates AI images. That has a free plan, but there is a daily limit. As of this video, there is no limit with the Dolly image generation on ChatGPT, aside from the 50 messages in three hours, but it does come with the Plus plan, which is currently $20 a month. Personally, I think it generates mostly acceptable images compared to Leonardo, and it is very nice to be able to chat with the chatbot about exactly what you want and do not want especially considering Leonardo AI 
did not quite understand, for lack of a better word, what I was even looking for here. You can also get UI images from sites like opengameart.org and images of paintings from sites like wikimedia.org or Pixabay. One of the first things you need to do is set up your layout. This will be what the user sees first. You'll have code that references this layout when you want things to happen, such as tapping a button. In my case, I needed to create a layout by navigating to the main slash res folder and creating a folder called layout. In this new directory, I needed to create an XML file. So I right clicked the layout folder and selected new layout resource file. I'm naming it activity underscore main dot XML. For the layout, I told ChatGPT I needed an image view and two buttons. Very simple. So it provided the code for a relative layout with an image view and two buttons. For the code, since I'm using Java, I needed to make a Java file rather than a Kotlin file, which ends in the .kt suffix. So I created a new Java class by right clicking the Java folder and selecting new Java class. This file is almost empty at first, so you need to write some code or get ChatGPT to give you some code. The code will set up a main activity and uses the layout you just created. For Java, that means you'll have a Java file that contains the main activity class, which will extend app com compat activity. In that class, you'll need to declare variables such as an image view. You'll also make some arrays which contain the resource locations of the paintings which is r.drawable and a string array for painting titles. The r.drawable is the way the code references the drawable folder. The same way r.layout will reference the layout folder. Next, you'll need to create an onCreate function. Similar to Kotlin apps, this onCreate function is what starts the app. It sets up the content view, in this case r.layout.activity underscore main creates an image view for the paintings, which references r.id.imageView, which is the ID of the image view set up in the activity underscore main dot XML layout. And two image buttons with IDs left button and right button. Make sure these IDs match the IDs in the XML layout file. It will tell you if there's an error. The buttons have a source image found in the drawable folder and a background set to null so you only see the image. At first I set these to the bottom of the screen until I tested it and realized the user's thumbs will go to the middle of the screen easier and it also looks better in the middle. I also changed them from green to gray simply by modifying the images in an image editor and replacing the files. You'll need to set on click listeners for each button by writing left and right button dot on click listener. When clicked, either button starts the change painting function. Basically, if the right arrow is clicked, it will add the variable current painting index, which is the number in the array of paintings. The image view will show whichever is the current painting index. Left arrow reduces this number, and it goes from 0 to 10 and vice versa. This function also shows a toast, which is a message on the screen with a short duration, which disappears after either a short or long duration. Long duration is, I think, 3.5 seconds. The toast will display the painting's name. So far, this is all the app does. It takes testing a few times to make sure everything is displaying correctly and every user interface is working properly. In this case, mostly just the button. Pretty cool feature of ChatGPT Plus is that it can analyze files, including images. It may be easier to upload an image and have it look at it than to explain it verbally. Or you can use a combination of both, as I did here, giving it a snapshot of the emulated device. I had a problem with the app's name showing. I didn't really understand how the layout could show this. So I sent it an image and asked it for solutions. ChatGPT, as usual, provided great recommendations which solved my problem. The paintings now appear from top to bottom with a little bit of letterboxing on the right and left, which I expected, and the buttons looking and working properly. Now I can test the app on my physical device to see if it works as it should, and it looks great. On screen is the code for the app up to this point. You can always take it and expand on it and we can actually do a much bigger app, maybe one that has different artists, all the paintings of the artist and so on. Maybe some text that explains the images, maybe even some audio like you're on an audio tour at a museum. The sky's the limit basically. With ChatGPT, you'll basically just have it work on these parts of the app as you go, test it, solve problems, Sometimes you can just get a error in the, in the log cat and then paste the error. You don't even really need to explain the error into the ChatGPT interface and then it'll explain what the problem is and tell you a solution. So it's time to get it on GitHub. You may be wondering how I learned how to do that. 
And you may have already guessed, it was ChatGPT that showed me how to do it. I used Git Bash to clone my GitHub repository, which I already made in my GitHub online interface on the website. Then I added all the app files to this folder on my computer. Then I added the files with Git Bash using a few commands to send it to my GitHub. That means I committed the files to the repository and voila, the files are now on my GitHub for all the public to gaze at in awe and wonder. Feel free to look at that. The link is in the description if you'd like. At the end of this project, I usually like to have ChatGPT provide me with some multiple choice questions to see if I learned anything. For me, I want to make apps first and foremost, so I'll use whatever tools are at my disposal to do so, including ChatGPT. But eventually I want to learn how to do all this myself so I can do it more quickly and with fewer mistakes. And I'll learn by doing and practicing. Next time we can make a more complex app or even more complex games. Please let me know if you have any ideas for those or if you know if this video sufficiently showed you how to use ChatGPT4 and its several new features to get code and to get an app created and up and running. Until next time, please subscribe for more AI and tech content, and I will see you next time.